Good morning. This is Okokuari School, first year history classroom virtual learning. We are coming to discuss on a topic Civilization of Axum and Ancient Ethiopia. On our first note, students, by the end of the lesson, I'm expecting your students to be able to locate where Axum Kingdom is. You might be able to identify the relationship between Axum and Ethiopia. Students must be able to mention at least four factors for the rise of Axum and finally give four effects of introduction of Christianity into Axum. Let us first look at civilization. What we are talking about civilization of Axum and ancient Ethiopia. Let's try to tell what civilization is. Yes, we discussed civilization of Egypt in uh, when we were in school. Briefly, civilization is the attainment of high level of development of people's culture, which includes their art of writing, public work, and others. We are talking about civilization. Every group of people or every individual has a culture that they practice. Having developed on the culture that you are practicing, having got, gone higher is what you are calling civilization. Therefore, it tells the Azum people were there. They have their culture and they developed on their, on their, on their culture they are practicing. That is what we are going to look at and look at that of ancient Ethiopia. We continue with, we continue by let us locate where Azum is. Azum was located by the highlands of Abyssinia as a former name of Ethiopia near the Red Sea. That's the where Azum can be found. The highlands of Ethiopia, the highlands of Abyssinia, the former name for Ethiopia. The kingdom of Azum was located at the East Miro and it emerged in the 4th century. The Axum town itself, we are saying, is, can be found in Abyssinia. That's the former name of Ethiopia near the Red Sea. We are talking about their kingdom, the, where they, they rule from. It also can be found at the Miro. And the Axum kingdom, the Axum state, the Axum kingdom, emerged in the 4th century BC. And it occupied the area extending from the present day Eritrea and northern part of Ethiopia. So currently, where can we locate Axum? We are saying Axum can be located at the present day Eritrea and northern part of Ethiopia. That is where Axum is today. And it emerged in the 4th century BC. We are continuing with the Axumites. We are, we, are talk, we, are, we are talking about their civilization. And, and civilization is, is the higher development of culture. And we are saying Axumites borrowed a great deal of civilization from foreign sources. So all the culture that they developed on it was not what they are doing that they developed, but the, the one they brought, what they went to learn from others to, 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 to come in. And they succeeded by involving civilization from Axum, what was African, that was African in, in, in character. So bringing in foreign culture, they didn't do away with their local culture, with their African culture, but they added it. They were able to merge both and maintain the African culture, which is the Axum one. Axum was the ancestor of Ethiopia, and for that matter, the word Axum and Ethiopia are going to use interchangeably. What are you saying? You are saying that ancestors of Ethiopia are the Axumites. Axum was the ancestor of, Ethio of e e e Ethiopia, and therefore we are going to... So, where we mention Ethiopia in the course of our discussion, we mean Axum. When we maybe we mention Axum, we mean, we mean Ethiopia, because the relationship among our objectives, we must know the relationship between Axum and Ethiopia. And we are saying that Axum was the ancestor of Ethiopia, and therefore Axum and ancestor will be used in Tertiary. Let's continue. Wait. Let's now look at the factors for the rise of Axum. The factors for the rise of Axum, the first factor is the emergence of the Yemen immigrants. These Yemen immigrants were these Yemen immigrants were Southern Arabians. The Yemen immigrants were traders and hunters from Southern Arabia, from Southern Arabia, sorry, who began to cross the Red Sea during the 6th century BC in search for ivory for Persian and Indian trade. 
they call themselves Habashats. They came to settle at the highlands of Ethiopia. And when they got there, there were people living there already. People living there were also called the Kushites. So the Habashats and the Kushites have come to live together. These two people, the Habashats and the Kushites, we say the, the Habashats are the Yemens who came to Ethiopia in the 6th century BC and they called themselves Habashats. They intermarried with the Kushites. And the population that came out of this intermarriage are those that are called the Abyssinians. The Abyssinians laid the foundation for the rise of for the rise of Axum during their period. The next one talk about the able 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 leadership. The king of Axum was able to build strong kingdom and made Azum the capital. The king of Azum, called Nebus, Nebus Negasi, meaning king of kings, was able to make Azum the leading power in Ethiopia and ancient world. The, they expanded the kingdom in several locations, in several directions, through conquests of wars. The next one is trade. Sorry. Let's talk agriculture before it comes to trade. Farming occupation in the kingdom of Axum helped the kingdom to, to, to rise. Whereas those living in the highlands of Ethiopia were cultivating crops, those living at the lowlands were also keeping livestock, that's rarely animals. And the area was also good and supported hunting. So farming and agriculture, agriculture I mean, also helped in the development of, in the, in the rise of Axum. The next one is trade. Trade brought a lot of wealth to Axum. Trade brought a, a lot of wealth to Axumite kingdom. Axum was, Axum was rich in ivory and tortoise shell. Axum developed commercial links with the Greco Egyptian world. By, by 5th century AD, Greek merchants from by 5th century AD, Greek merchants from Greek merchants had already settled at the horns of Africa because of trade. The next one is strong military. The recruitment of Egyptian Greco military men, men to help on the on some part of the Red Sea benefited Axumites because they used their military strategies to in the course of their fight and it helped them to conquer most of the wars that they they, they engaged themselves in. Now geographical location of Axum. Azum was located on the important trade routes from the port of Adulis to the interior, which served as the location center for ivory from the hinterland. Azum, the where Azum was a set was a center where ivory was got in the interland in the interland, and it is brought over there where it is. Um, it, uh, it is close that those coming from Port Adulis, when they alight, when they get there, there is where everybody is able to bring materials from interland and from the interior part of Ethiopia to come and do and sell and sell there. Even those outside Ethiopia also, it makes the trade, it makes uh, people coming there and then trade also grew for it to go well. Let us now look at how Christianity came into Azu. That is the introduction of Christianity into Azu. Christianity was introduced into Azu by a young Christians, a young Syrian Christians called Frumatius and his brother Audacious, who were involved in the shipwreck and found themselves on the Ethiopian coast. These two brothers later found themselves in the court of Azu during the reign of Cain. During the, during the reign of Cain, Ella Emida. 
The Admites were practicing polytheism and they worshipped Saudi Arabian gods like Asta, God of Sky, Behe, and, and Mary. So these two brothers, Frumatius and Audacious, were those who brought Axum, who brought sorry, who brought Christianity into Axum. We continue with fact, effects of effects of introduction of Christianity into Axum. When Christianity came into Axum, how does it affect the Axumite kingdom? First, it encouraged missionary activities in Axum. The introduction of Christianity in Axum inspired the monks, that is religious community of men of the Ethiopian church to embark on missionary work by going outside the territories of, e of Ethiopia to propagate the faith among those converted to propagate the faith. Those among those converted during this period um, were the southern ethnic people of Ethiopia such as the Erinya, the and again Christian pilgrims in Axum made journeys to Jerusalem regularly to obtain spiritual and spiritual guidance and inspirations. So with the missionary activities now because they have accepted Christianity, the monks that the Christian community of men were allowed to evangelize, go out and preach. It made them go outside Ethiopia, even outside Ethiopia, all bounds of Ethiopia to propagate the word. And through that, some people were converted to become Christian. And with that, it made pilgrimage to Jerusalem, Jerusalem easier. People were now going to Jerusalem and back and forth and back from there. The next fact effect is the link. The link the Egyptian church to the Coptic church. The Ethiopian church became closely bound with the Coptic church of Egypt in doctrine and organization. As a result, nomastic ideas sprang up in the Ethiopian, especially in the north, with the establishment of several monasteries. When you say Coptic, Coptic when Christianity were, was, were, was introduced into Egypt, Egypt accepted Christianity and changed, it, changed every word of Christianity into their doctrine and their culture. That's why it's called Coptic Church of Egypt. So now Ethiopian also came to adopt it. They also let all their everything that they are doing, included included their culture, and though they have accept, they have accepted it, no more poly, polytheistic. They have also accepted in the Coptic Church. The next one is that Christianity brought about spread of knowledge of crafts into Axum. Christianity, Ethiop, Christian Ethiopians introduced the thoughts of crafts of weaving to the southness. They also introduced other vocational and technical skills like gold and silver working to the people. Everything that comes comes with good things. Among the good things that Christianity brought into Azum is about the spread of knowledge in craft work. So the people came there and taught the Azumites how to do things with their hands, how to create things and to bring to bring wealth to them. The next one is Christianity brought about peace in Axum. How did it brought about peace in Axum? In as a as a state as a state religion, Christianity enjoyed royal protection, and as it enjoyed royal protection, its right does not give room to kill. So people who were being killed for sacrifice and other things were all stopped, and there were understanding between them. With this, there was peace in Azum due to the introduction of Christianity. The adoption of Christianity helped literature to flourish. The Bible and other Christian texts were translated into G G's language. Example, can as an as war with the northern and southern part of Axum and the Nilotic 
Sudan were all written in Gs. Another literary work was the Kebra Negasti. The king was believed to be to be descendant of King Solomon and Queen of Sheba. According to Ethiopian tradition and what they wrote, they said Queen of Sheba was an Ethiopian ruler. So with the introduction of literature into Axum, they were able to write. They start writing things over over them the Bible was translated into their language which which, which is the Jews they were able to trace back and write down their ancestors which is Solomon and Queen of Sheba the use of military methods Christian missionaries joined hands with the then Ethiopian kings to spread the faith through military means the result was that Ulama to the south was conquered and imported into Ethiopia. So they used military status in the spread of Christianity and through that they were able to convert some people, capture some people, conquer some people, and then bring them into Ethiopia due to Christianity. Finally, introduction of new architectural design. The Christian ev evangelists of Axum brought back new ideas and technique in, in construction. As they came to, as they came in contact with the foreign nationals that have the expertise in these fields, yes, and with Christianity, they get in contact with those who are not only the Adumite, but people from outside there. And when people are coming, they came with their mind, but they came with their ideas, and as per their technology that they have, they help in introducing some to Adum, and it's helped Adum to regain architectural designs in there. Part on the part of Azum as well. We continue with the fall of Azum and the rise of the Kingdom of Ethiopia. The fall of Azum and the rise of Kingdom or of Latter Kingdom of Ethiopia. Azum was invaded by a nomadic or a strong people called Zanavaj towards the end of the 7th century AD. The invasion forced the Azumites to flee and take refuge in the mountains, mountainous districts of Tigre, Amaha, and Shoa. The Axumites intermarried with the local people, that's the Agao. As a result of the revival of Red Sea trade by the Fatimid dynasty in Egypt around 1000 AD, and in the course of that, Ethiopia began to recover her past glory. What are we trying to say here? The fall, how Axum was, how Axum fell. They were attacked by this Zanavaj. And when they were attacked, they flee. In, they, they were attacked toward the 7th century AD. And when they, they were attacked, the Azumites flee from their home. And they came to hide on the mountainous district of this name that we mentioned the Tegre, the Amher, and the Shoa. The, they went to meet people there, and the people they met there was called the Agao and they also intermarried with them with them these things happen with their intermarry with their intermarry at the and with these places it helped the revival of the red sea trade by the fatimid so they had a um, contact they had trade relation with the fatimid dynasty in egypt that was around 1000 AD and the cause of that ethiopia began to recover of its glory. Now the Azumites had made to run. So Ethiopia, the absence of absence of um, Azum on their place, and then having revived the trade at the Red Sea, at the Red Sea by the Fatimi, it made the place active again. In Ethiopia then recover its glory. Let's also look at the problems that face the Solomonic dynasty. When we say the Solomonic di di dynasty, whom are we referring to? We learned that Azumites in their literature said their ancestor was Solomon and king of Sheba. So their kingdom was known as the Solomonic dynasty. So we are talking about the Azumites. The Solomonic dynasty, the Solomonic dynasty was faced with both internal 
and external problems between the 10th and 16th century AD. So there was a problem there, and the, and the problem was be, between this period, 10th and the 16th century AD. First was the attempt to convert the pagan Agal population into Christianity. To turn somebody in his worship to another religion takes a lot of problems. With this effect, there were a lot of warfare between the between the Agumite and the Agal. And with this, it's, it's the first problem that they encountered. Attack on Solomonic dynasty by the Falasha Jews. Around the 10th century AD, a group of Agao called Falasha Jews unexpectedly attacked and overthrew the Solomonic dynasty. The Falasha were the community that had been converted to Ju Judaism and they used the Old Testament, that is the Jewish Bible. And the apocrypha. Apocrypha are some books that has been rejected by the are some books in the Old Testament that has not been regarded or has not been author, authorized. As their scripture, so they accepted these two, these two things, the Old Testament and the Apocrypha, as their scripture. And they strictly observe the Saturdays as their Sabbath and the rights right of circumcision of boys and girls. That is the effect, that is the problem they also have. The Falasha Jews attacked the Azumite, the Solomonic dynasty. The Falasha Jews attacked the Solomonic dynasty. And these Falasha Jews were using the Old Testament, the, 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 the Bible and the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha were some books which are known as not authorized by their leaders. And then they were using them in whatever they doing. And example of the kings who ruined this who ruined this and happened was after King Yakuma Amlek tried to convert Agao to Christianity. The next one is the Zagwe dynasty. The Zagwe dynasty took over the administration of the kingdom from the Falasha Jews because of their bad because of their bad rule and established their capital at Adifa. The internal trouble forced the Solomonic dynasty to take the refuge in Shoa and Azum, and Azum ceased to be the political capital. In the second half of the 3rd century, the Solomonic dynasty regained political control over Ethiopia by seizing power once again from the Zagwe, from the Zagwe. This was after King Yokoma Amalek tried to convert Agao to Christianity. So we, we learned that um, Azumite has been taken, Azum has been taken over by the Falasha. And the Falasha Jews were ruling over there. Because of their bad rule, the Zagwe people were able to overtake them. And when the Zagwe people overtook them, it gave room also for the Azumite to again come back and then overtake their their land and we are saying that it's saying that this thing happened when they tried to convert some of the agal to christianity and it happened after Cain of after um king yakuma amalek tried to convert agal to christianity the next one one of the external problems that were created were by the muslims as the Greek kingdom of Ethiopia struggled to establish its control over the Agao, Islam began to enter Ethiopia during this period. By the 13th century, Islam had already be, been accepted in the areas like Somali coasts, Ifats, and others, and the most powerful of the Muslim kingdom was Ifats in the it's in Shoa. Because of various internal struggling, internal fighting, fighting with others, it made the Azum Kingdom, the Somonic dynasty, weak. And once it's weak, it also gives room for another people, that is the Muslim, to enter. 
So with this, it gives room for Muslims to come in. And when they came in, Islamic teaching was also accepted in the Sunnic dynasty. We continue with the fall of ancient Ethiopian kingdom. What calls what causes the fall of the ancient Ethiopian kingdom? Ethiopia was not a centralized state. Because it was not centralized, they were not able to mobilize and get things together to think together, move together. Everybody does his thing separately. And this it doesn't call for unity. And there's no there's no strength when there's no unity. The next one is infighting. Among them, among the Ethiopians, one group will be fighting with another internally. Having fighting with another, there will be no peace, and we will, we will not be able to build a strong kingdom. The next one is the attack by the Muslims. Yes, when Muslims came in, because because we are not centralized, because we are not united, we are fighting among ourselves. The Muslims were able to attack them and defeat them. So the Roman dynasty was defeated, and then, so ancient Ethiopia was defeated, and then Muslim came to take in complete independence. The vassal states that were conquered during their war, their war of expansion, all these states were allowed to rule themselves. They did not all brought together to rule, to be organized on what to do as an result. And since vassal states are allowed to rule themselves, there's no strong, there's no um, central point where control comes from. Everybody does his things. And, and with this, it cannot be called as a kingdom where everybody does things separately. And of from the discussions that we have done, and then and the, I've added notes on the page that you can read through from as I was reading for you. Let's try to answer these two questions. One, what factors led to the rise of the early kingdom of Azu? Two, how did Christianity affect Azu during the 4th century BC? I hope we have had a good discussion and I pray that you try your hands on these questions. And wherever you have, to, you have a question, you need explanation, let us find a way to meet and then we will try to explain further for you. Let us all again try to obey the protocols, observe protocols concerning the, uh, the spread, control of the spread of corona virus that we all stay safe and meet again. Thank you.